Yo, what's going on guys? Arax here. Welcome back to another video for Elden Ring. And in this one, I want to bring you the Trevor Belmont build, the Castlevania build, the double whip build. For those of you guys that want to do something different, been messing around with double whips. And honestly, I have been having so much fun with them. They are hella cool to use, but they are also incredibly potent. When set up correctly, this can do some incredible damage. And it actually uses something that I don't see a lot of people talking about, which is the Occult Affinity. So in this video, I want to give you a quick rundown on the build. It's pretty simple. But of course it revolves around these nice two whips you see here and hopefully some massive damage So if you guys do enjoy this a like would be super appreciated comment down below Let me know if you guys have tried this out or tried out anything like this And of course if you guys have been enjoying the Elden Ring content make sure you keep it locked for plenty more So to begin with let's start with the weapons We have two whips here We have the thorned whip and we also have Hoslo's petal whip Now both of these have been chosen of course they do have the ability to apply your own ashes of war to them And they do as passive effects, have blood loss build upon, which of course is nice, but keep in mind, this is not a blood loss build. I know some of you guys might be like, not another one. No, this is not to do with blood loss. Yes, of course it is a nice bonus, but this is an occult build. But you will of course need these two whips. I'll go through where to get them in just a moment. It is worth noting though, that occult as an affinity is one of those interesting ones whereby when you apply it to your weapon, it basically takes a lot of the physical damage scaling from Arcane, as opposed to other stuff like Dex, which is often used for whips. So this time around, you do need to be pumping a lot of your points into Arcane. I've done some testing, sort of messing around with the numbers, and of course we do know that the uh, you know the upper end Arcane soft cap is 80. Beyond that point, you get, of course, massively diminishing returns. So, uh, you know, sort of testing this out in the respec station, going anywhere beyond 80 just doesn't seem to be worth it in the slightest. But going up to this point, it does give us the opportunity to nicely boost our weapons. Of course you will still need some decks in order to use these ones but the primary scaling, the primary thing that will influence our damage this time around is arcane. If you guys want to get the thorn whip what you want to do is go over to the snowy region of the map and you want to go to the giant's mountaintop catacombs. If you don't have this one unlocked you can go over to the Zamor ruins and work your way around but we want to go here simply because when you run out of the door and you then run forward you will find this enemy here. This is the enemy that drops this whip. It is of course a random drop so you will need to farm this one. I don't think it's too rare. I got this on sort of my fourth drop. I will say if you don't have any runes on you then it is much quicker to simply just kill him if he doesn't have it jump off the bridge because it will then spawn you at the nearest stake of marica versus the alternative which involves having to run back into the cave sit the side of grace run back out you can do whichever one you want but i didn't have any runes on me or any that i really cared about so i just went for the quick method anyway kill this guy he drops his whip and this is one of the ones you want to use as for Hoslo's Petal Whip, this one you simply need to complete the Volcano Mana questline, and in the process of doing that, when you kill one of the enemies, you will get that whip. Now, of course, there are some other options, but I like these ones specifically because, of course, we can apply Ashes of Water to them, but they do also have native blood loss buildup. So, of course, while we are leaning heavily into the Occult and the Arcane damage, it is still nice to have some additional blood ticks that can just, uh, you know, proc some additional damage on your enemies. So, these are the ones I recommend. I do also have a Dragon Communion Seal on here simply because I do also run with one incantation just for some additional damage boost. You can use whatever seal you want, but this one is the one that my stats allow me to use. Outside of this, we do of course have a couple of familiar items. Now again, this is not a blood loss build. However, these weapons do have blood loss on them, so it makes sense to at least lean into that. And hence, therefore, I have run the White Mask again, which gives you an attack boost when blood loss is nearby. And of course, that stacks with the Talisman. Additionally, we're also running with the Raptor's Black Feathers chest piece, which of course also gives you a boost to your jump attacks. So if you guys saw our Godskin Peeler build the other day, you will know it is very similar to that. Unfortunately, from all my testing, my sort of research, there don't appear to be any sort of whip related armor pieces which is kind of a shame even down to the talisman side of things there's a lot of talisman out there that are for different weapon types but unfortunately not for the whips so it doesn't really seem like there's anything you can like heavily spec into specifically around the weapon which again is kind of sad maybe we'll see that in a future update but as it currently stands this is pretty good because of course with two whips when you power stance them when you wield two of them and you perform the jumping attack it does a lot of damage the two whip combo is just fun regardless it attacks pretty quickly you got some decent reach on it and of course with the right ashes of war which we'll speak about in just a moment you then do have some flexibility for your movement as for the talisman again we have lord of blood's exaltation just for that attack power boost when blood loss is nearby again not a blood loss build but we can of course take advantage of what is on the weapons we then also have the Claw Talisman, which again can enhance your jump attacks. We then have the Winged Sword Insignia. Again, there's an upgraded version of this, but this basically raises the attack power of successive attacks. And again, since this attacks quite fast, we can lean into that. And I then have Marika's Sword Seal, simply because I wanted 15 points in faith. But again, this is your free slot. Feel free to put whatever you want in here. I would actually recommend probably something for more stamina, just because 
this build, especially when we use Bloodhound Step, does go through stamina quite fast, so, uh, you know, maybe use that. So, with that being said, a note on Ashes of War. One of the most important things, of course, for these weapons is we need them to have the Occult Affinity. One of the ways you can do that, of course, is to either get an Occult Ash of War, which, of course, I will list in a second, or if you happen to have the Black Whetstone, then that allows you to apply a Bleed, Poison, or Occult to certain Ashes of War. So, what we've done in this situation is I have applied Bloodhound Step to the Thorn Whip, which, of course, gives us a fantastic mobility, and I've then chosen the Occult Affinity. And as for the other one, I have chosen White Shadows Lure, which is an Occult Ash of War, but it's actually quite nice because it allows you to put down something that basically draws the enemy's aggro and you can then of course go and sneak behind them for some massive damage. That being said, the other one that I do actually really like, I hadn't really had an opportunity to use it or haven't really sort of taken the time to test it up until now, but Rapture of the Mists, which of course you obtain if you go through the quest line to get Eleonora's Pole Blade. This one is quite nice because when you time it correctly, you basically can just firm attack, launch yourself into the sky naturally, which then puts you in prime position to be able to perform that strong jump attack. So I do actually really like this one, but I went for Bloodhound Step because the early mobility is just really nice. But again, you can kind of choose whatever you want. The main thing here is we're just using this to ensure we can get Occult on our whips. If you haven't got Bloodhound Step, then don't forget you can do this by going over to Lena's Rise, Sight of Grace. From there, you then need to set time of day to night and go onto the bridge and then defeat the Knight's Cavalry. Doing so will give you Bloodhound Step. Meanwhile, if you want to get the Shadow Lure, Ash of War, then you instead want to go over to the inner Consecrated Snowfield at Sight of Grace. From there, you then want to run to the location you see me running to right now. You'll see a bunch of wolves that are basically chasing sort of a seemingly an invisible target. That is an invisible treasure dung beetle. Same principle, go and attack the tracks when you sort of see where it is. And then when you destroy it, you will get the White Shadow's Lure. And again, if you are interested in that Raptors in the Mist one, I will put the link to the Eleonora's Pole Blade video in the description box down below. You will get that during the process. But all in all, that is pretty much it to set it up. And then effectively, you just run around and you perform jump attacks with the whips, or you can use grounded combos, and they just hit for some really, really nice damage. You will, of course, get those additional bleed procs during the process, which, of course, is also nice for chunky off health. But even without that, this thing hits for some really crazy numbers. And it's also just a lot of fun to use. Honestly, I love Bloodhound Step, being able to quite literally just dash around enemies, completely ignoring some of the really powerful moves and just sort of getting behind them and then going for those whip combos. It is super satisfying, and as someone that has spent most of the game playing with your katanas, this is a really nice change of pace. So, if you guys are looking for a new and fun way to play, you want to embody the Castlevania lifestyle, become Trevor Belmont, and just run around with double whips, consider giving this a try. If you have any questions, by me, let me know in the comments down below. Again, I'll link all the relevant videos for locations for stuff that has not been covered in this video in the description box down below. And again, if you've missed our recent videos, you can check out this one, and be sure to keep it locked on the channel for plenty more Elden Ring.